Okay, in this video we're going to do problem set 8, question 2, and we're going to go back to the revenue uh, being predicted by flights uh, worksheet that we did in problem set 7. So if we look at problem set 7 here, we see that we had a, uh, at the very end, we plugged in a, a number for the number of flights of 321,000 and we came up with a prediction of three billion six hundred and ten million seven hundred and twenty eight as the revenue and so that's what this number was right here and uh, we're looking at uh, when we look at our data at our data 2 tab we see that we do have a number for first quarter 2012 and that number was actually uh, three billion nine hundred ninety one thousand which is uh, uh, quite a bit greater. It's $380 million greater than what we had predicted. So uh, uh, so we're going to look at that first. Uh, first of all, let's recognize that the standard error from our problem set 7 model was $390 million. Uh, If we look at the compute tab, we see that the standard error was $390 million. And that is uh, greater, as so it's within uh, the the difference of 380 million is within the standard error. So that would that's the equivalent to saying that it's within the standard deviation. So on that, so in that respect, it looks okay. Uh, um, if we if we look at the back at the confidence interval estimate uh, chart back here. We see that um, for our confidence interval on the average for y is uh, the interval half width is 306 thousand, or 306 million, uh, which is less than 380 million, uh, which which means that our estimate here, uh, the confidence interval, uh, is the range. Uh, of the confidence interval does not include what we actually got. We got three billion nine hundred ninety-one thousand uh, million. I'm sorry, and um, the upper limit is three billion nine hundred sixteen thousand. So in that respect, it's not so good. Uh, so it's too high. Uh, it's outside the confidence interval. Uh, however, if we if we actually look at the individual response, you know, that's the prediction interval. Uh, 303 billion 991 million is well within the prediction interval of uh, uh, 2.7 billion and 4.4 billion. So uh, if we look back here at this for individual, the prediction interval, uh, this prediction interval is wider. Uh, our, our interval half width is much larger, and uh, so this this uh, our 3991 3.9 billion number. Uh, is within that. So, um, you know, it's that's pretty much uh, summarizes the, the model, what's the problem with the model, and so does this indicate the prediction model is bad? Well, I would say probably not. Okay, for B, uh, uh, we want to look at the, uh, we found the R squared for predicting the revenue was 66%. And uh, we're supposed to uh, look and see, does this indicate that there possibly could be some other uh, uh, numbers uh, that may uh, help us, that we could add to help us improve this model. Uh, if we look at um, the compute here, we see that 65, I guess 65 percent um, is 65 um, percent uh, of the variance in, in revenue uh, comes from the model, which is basically just flights. And so, uh, yes, it does look as though we can improve when we look at problem set 8 and we look at our compute tab, we see that it's much higher and so perhaps we can add some more of these in there, uh, or add at least one of these in there. Uh, which one uh, might we add? Uh, well, I would go for the one with the lowest p-value, and that I think is probably uh, this number here. It's tough to see. At the highest t maybe helps. So um, uh, this AirTran number looks like a 
a good candidate. Uh, so, um, you know, 34% of the original is unexplained, and so we can try to improve upon that. So um, uh, we can look at adding AirTran, and I think that's a good choice because the p-value is lowest, uh, and so that looks like it'd be a strong one to uh, consider. All right, so let's see. Uh, add a dummy variable, uh, add it to the data for problem set seven, in problem set seven, and we have to skip the last two because the data actually is two more, two more quarters, and then we're going to run a regression predicting revenue from flights and air train. Okay, to do that, let's uh, let's go back here and let's go to um, our data tab here, and let's um, you know I'm going to open up a new spreadsheet here. I have a new spreadsheet here, and I'm going to um, I'm going to modify the data one tab by adding AirTran. I'm going to add this column here down to fourth quarter two, 2011 copy, and go over here, and I'm going to click here and do a paste, just the values. And let's do a multiple regression. Add-ins, pH stat, regression, multiple regression, and this thing pops up. For our Y, we will do revenue again, and for our X variables, we will do both flights and the AirTran merger, and let's just click all these, and I'm going to click the 95% in case I want to use this again. Okay. And our compute tab comes up and we see that our R square has improved 79% uh, as of with the uh, both flights and AirTran. Pretty low p-values, that's good. We're uh, pretty good significance there. And so this is with flights and AirTran. 79% when we look at just flights uh, we get 65% when we look at all four we get 94% so that's what the differences look like <coughs> uh, with the adjusted R square uh, since we're comparing two different regression models with different with a different number of independent variables, uh, both predicting revenue, the same thing, uh, we, we want to use our adjusted R square when we compare them. 78% is better than 64%. Uh, the significance value, F is lower, and uh, so the standard error is lower too. It's down to 306. We look here. 306. So that's an improvement over 390 also. So, um, explain the logic of the problem and why we might ex expect a significant interaction between flights and air train. Okay, so so this is a different problem now. This is this is uh, if there's an interaction between flights and air train. We basically are going to multiply those two values together and see if we get an even better uh, um, significance, smaller standard error, uh, uh, larger R square. So we would expect the merger with AirTran, uh, with the AirTran changes, to influence the number of flights, uh, influence uh, uh, what the number of how the number of flights affects revenue, uh, presum presumably because of economies of scale, and perhaps being able to fly more full planes, we should expect the revenue contribution per flight to increase. So in other words. There's a revenue contribution per flight before AirTran, and then there's a different revenue contribution per flight after AirTran and uh, per flight. So that's what we're gonna um, that's what we're gonna look at. So to statistically uh, test that, 
uh, we're going to add a add a term, which is flights times AirTran. I'm going to um, add that here. Let's say. So let's go back to this data, and I'm going to add flights. I'm going to do like X AirTran. And this is just simply going to be equals this times this. And I will copy this down. And uh, then I'm going to run a regression on all using all three independent variables. Let's do add-ins, thstat, oops, regression, multiple regression. And for y, we're going to do revenue again. And for x values, we're going to do all three of these. And uh, click all these. Click OK. Oh, got to put something here. Let me put a 95. OK. And now for this Compute 2 tab where we have this flights times air tran, we get an even higher R square, adjusted R square. Uh, we get a lower standard error, <clears throat> uh, great significance F. Uh, still p-values here all low and so uh, this looks like it's even better so uh, it is a much better model the adjusted R square increases to 81 percent from 78 percent and the significance of F is better it's lower and the standard error is down from 282 uh, down to 282 from 306 and all three p-values for rejecting the coefficients uh, uh, of being zero, uh, rejecting the hypothesis that the coefficients are zero uh, are are below 0 0.05. So that looks like that works. Um, and so uh, if we if we decide to make our model even better here, it looks like we did not even have to add a third uh, variable. We just needed to multiply these two together. Uh, we just multiply flights and uh, the fact that there is a merger, basically uh, multiplying this by, by this and adding this as, uh, as a second term here, and we uh, did even better. So uh, that concludes question two and problem set eight. Thanks very much for watching.